I said, you have to understand, it's very hard for me, somebody who is definitely afraid of judgment, to stand up and not ego up, because I think I did a really good job of not egoing up, but standing up and saying, this is why I'm qualified to coach almost any podcaster, because I just, I'm further along than most. I know more. My awareness is higher. I want you to be so good at what you do that you don't get triggered in these moments because you're so good at what you do. At this stage, with thousands and thousands of coaching calls, I'm not like triggered by her asking a simple question. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode, number 1,153, something you must know when you're choosing your goals. Today, for episode number 1,154, dealing with judgment sucks. So just a a preface, Alan and I usually do not record before 10 a.m., It is 9.18, so you are going to get the 9.18 version of Kevin and Alan today. We will see what happens. So I was on a podcast the other day, Alan, and I've told this story in the past where one of my fears, because I had imposter syndrome at the very beginning of this journey, and I always had that thought of who am I to do a self-improvement podcast? Who am I to coach? Who am I to do content on getting better? And I've said this on the podcast before where I had somebody reach out to me and they said, hey, they DM'd me and they said, hey, I don't mean this with any negativity, but what gives you the right to do the content you're doing in the podcast and coaching people? And I thought about it, which was really good for me. And I said, well, at this point, I've done however many episodes, 100 episodes, a couple hundred, I don't know. We've interviewed some of the most successful people in our space. I've been studying self-improvement every day for the last however many years. This is really my life. And I have created results in my life that a lot of other people desire. And the person responded and they said, all right, cool. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you for sharing that with me. And that made me feel really, really good. So I went on a podcast the other day. And... And let me preface this preface with the fact that this host was great. I have nothing against this host. It was a wonderful conversation. Nothing negative. But it was a very interesting way to start the interview. Right when the interview starts, the host said, I usually don't have life coaches on because I think it's kind of garbage. Like the whole thing I think is garbage. And I think most people don't know what they're talking about. And she said, what's your take on that? And I said, well, first of all, I do not consider myself a life coach. I'm not. You'll never see that in any of my branding. It doesn't say that. I'm not a life coach. I don't even know what that means. Like, I'm not a life coach. But we we went into kind of, it was a short debate, but this person pretty much said in the beginning that, like, I don't necessarily believe in what you're doing. And I want to have you on because I want to have a conversation. But I don't really believe in what, like, that coaching. I don't believe in that. And she asked me this question live. And she said, what Why do you get to coach people? And I was like, it's a great question. I said, well, I can speak specifically to podcast coaching. I said, think of it this way. You're a podcaster, right? And she said, yeah. And I said, well, I have 1,155 episodes. Our business is a multi-six-figure business. We are on the top charts in several countries as we speak right now. We have a team. We have really good content. We've had some of the most successful people in the world on. This is my full-time job. My results say that I can coach people. And I said, but I also understand that's a fine line because a lot of people fake their results. My, this is what it is. And I I told her this. I said, my awareness to achieving the goal that you desire is higher than your awareness. And I can bridge the gap. That's why I can coach. Just like a mechanic who knows how to fix a vehicle, they can work on a vehicle better than I can, their awareness is higher, it can bridge the gap between what I need done and what they know they can do. But it was, it was a hard, it was a hard interview for me because I got, I literally made a joke and I said, I will win you over by the end of this interview. Like I, it is going to be my mission in this episode to win you over by the end of this interview. But I was super scared that when when I was qualifying myself as a coach or a professional, I was going to look like an idiot or like a dick. Really, that was my fear. And I said that. I said, you have to understand, it's very hard for me, somebody who is definitely afraid of judgment, to stand up and not ego up, because I think I did a really good job of not egoing up, 
but standing up and saying, this is why I'm qualified to coach almost any podcaster. Cause I just, I'm further along than most. I know more. My awareness is higher, but I had that moment of this judgment sucks. Like it sucks to get judged live on a podcast. Again, it wasn't a negative experience. We had a really good conversation. She ended up following me after. So that's great. But it was an interesting thing where if that happened to me three years ago, that would have gone drastically different. And it probably would not have been a productive interview. I probably would have been triggered. But yes, dealing with judgment sucks, but I do believe it sucks less as you go on, at least as long as your belief in what you're doing is is higher. The higher your belief in what you're doing, I think the less it sucks when you get judgment. Because at least the judgment doesn't make you second guess yourself. There was no part of me in that interview that said, ah, maybe she's right. It literally got to the point where it was like, well, honestly, and I didn't say this, but this was my inner dialogue. And again, I don't mean any negativity. Your lack of awareness around why you could use a coach is not my fault. That's, that's your lack of awareness. It's not mine. I have the awareness of how to help you. Your awareness of how I can help you just isn't there yet. And that's really what I got to. So I was, my ultimate goal was to empathize with this person. But again, I don't mean anything negative by this story. I just think it's a really good, a really good example of imagine if you were interviewed on the thing that you do and you love and you've committed your life to and somebody kind of said, eh, I don't really, I don't really believe in that. I don't think that's real. I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of garbage. It was interesting. It was a very interesting interview. Great. That was a great, I enjoyed that very much. Just listening to that. Mm. And, <laughs> you know, in that, in that situation, it's so difficult to not turtle up or puffer fish yeah. very very difficult to stay centered you definitely stayed centered which is huge i, I think tried. in the past you would have probably turtled up or you go up yeah you know yeah. most likely turtled up yeah. kev it's interesting to hear you talk about that because i was on a walk with Emilia last night we were walking tucker and she was asking me something about, oh okay so she has a company called evolve ventures and on saturday tomorrow i'm doing my fer- very first business consulting call with her and Bianca. And so I'm a business consultant for my girlfriend and future wife's company. Hmm. And so we were talking on the walk. And she's like, well, how does it work? Like, what's your sort of setup? And it's one of those things too, where not only is it, how do you handle judgment? How do you, how do you handle challenge? I think that's the key here is like, you could have either, either run away or you could have like fought and, and fought against this person instead of, sort of centered in a centered way stick up for what you believe in and so anyways i told her i said well you submit an intention i ask what's your intention for the session the hour-long session i ask bianca what's her intention and then i come in with my own intention and then i synergize all three and that way it makes the hour the most powerful what i think is interesting is that i've been doing this so long and this is something that i wanted to bring to everybody as well I want you to be so good at what you do that you don't get triggered in these moments because you're so good at what you do. At this stage, with thousands and thousands of coaching calls, I'm not like triggered by her asking a simple question, Mm. you know, about how does it work? Because it's not an attacky question of like, well, is this even worth my time or anything like that? And even if it was, because I've had people, Kev, uh, I'll tell this story briefly. Kev sent me uh, a potential client who uh, I am not a fan of. So I, I'm just going to tell everyone who's listening. I have a really, really, really hard time with people who are arrogant. This is my definition of arrogance. And I've been arrogant in the past too, so I get it, okay? But I, I have a really hard time with people who are arrogant. This is what arrogance is. Arrogance equals low awareness to Kevin's story. Think about that other person. Arrogance equals low awareness plus low competence plus high confidence. Now, I don't know if that other person was arrogant or not, but I do know they had lower awareness than Kevin did in podcasting. In podcasting specifically, that's the key. Because if it's not about your thing, it, it gets it's difficult to say I have higher awareness. Okay, well, in what? Cars? Ah, probably not, right? So awareness is, needs to be in a silo of some kind. So low awareness plus low competence, who's more competent, you or or her at podcasting, if you were honest? (laughs) Me. Okay, yeah, right. Probably by a significant margin, by the way. And Kevin doesn't want to make her feel bad about that. But at the same time, 
she kind of needs to know if the relationship is going to be positive. Because it's very hard for someone to be authentically themselves when they constantly have to butt up against someone else's ego. Mm. And so, and then number three, which is high confidence. If she believes she's a better podcaster than Kevin, and she believes she has higher competence, and she has high confidence in her own abilities, Kevin has to do one of two things. He has to leave the room because it's going to be brutal to do that interview, or he has to level set her awareness and say, listen, I'm not trying to be unkind to you, but it's not close. We, we've been doing this longer. We are more aware, X, Y, Z. So I was on the, uh, the walk with Emilia, and she said, what are you most proud of? I love that question. She always asks me that. And I said, it's the, the business infrastructure at NLU. Like the infrastructure of the way that we've set up NLU is, in my opinion, the best I've ever seen, ever studied. It's unbelievable. And it's what we've spent five and a half years building. So it's really, you know, it's not like I'm just saying that and we haven't done anything with it. It's really quite world class. And so uh, she says, well, okay, I got a new client yesterday. And she asked me another question. I forget exactly what the question was, but it was something along the lines of, oh, okay, so I'm, I just surpassed 255 days or whatever exercise in a row. And she said, what's your new perspective on people who talk but don't walk? Having done that for so many days in a row, and I'll tell this story briefly. One of the reasons I started the hashtag NLU Fit Pick Challenge is because there was someone in my life, I'll keep it anonymous, who said they were going to exercise 80 days in a row. And I had a conversation with Emilia and I was like, no chance. There's no chance. He's just saying that. He just, A lot of people say they're going to do things, but they don't do them. And trust me, I've been there too. I understand. Okay. You know, I'm going to write every day. I'm going to be on time. We Jeff forward. But I don't say things and then put no effort into them. This person has a very large ego. And they said they were going to do 80 days in a row of exercise. And I knew for a fact, she actually believed him. And I was like, sweetheart, no, there's no possibility. 80 days of exercise in a row is no small feat. That is like really difficult to do. And there's no chance he's going to do that. He's never even done three. Now, if he had done three and then six and then nine and then 12 and a couple weeks and a couple months, then it would be like, okay, yeah, he'll probably do that. I said, sweetheart, he's just saying that. He's not really going to do that. So that's why I started the NLU Fit Pick Challenge is because I wanted to prove to myself that I really could do 80 days in a row. And I wanted to beat my old record. My old record was, I think, three and a half months or something. So it was like 105 days. Hi, everyone. My name is Amanda. I am a dental hygienist and a mom of two teenagers. I was first introduced to Kevin and Alan about three years ago. So that led me to book a consultation with Alan and I showed up to that call in the lowest spot that I have been at in my entire life. He is a good human that genuinely wants the best in your life, your future, your love, your relationships, your wealth, and you have the chance to be in the same room or on the same call or have these two in your life in any way then you are blessed. So anyways, I crushed that record. Awesome. I'm going to go to the end of the year and then I'm probably done because honestly, brutal. What's my point? My point is that what I had had told her is this. I said, the thing that people struggle with the most is that they don't actually know how. They say these things, right? I want to start a successful podcast. I want to be a billionaire. I want to be a multimillionaire. I want to start a six-figure business. I want to blah, blah, blah. I said, the difference between me and these other people that I coach is that I actually just know how. I said, people think they need motivation. They don't need motivation. I'm talking to the listeners right now too. You don't need motivation if you're headed in the wrong direction. If you're headed in the wrong direction, you're, if I motivate you, you're just going to head that way faster. What you really need, honestly, is education. And that's my favorite thing, and that's what I'm most proud of, is that I educate people and I say, hey, don't actually go that way faster. You need to pivot. You need to change direction. You need to change your paradigm. You need to change your beliefs. You need to change your identity. You're headed in the wrong direction. That's not how you actually get there. And so what I told her is, just like a mechanic can fix a car, I can help someone 
change their direction, fix their direction based on what they really want because I actually know how. I actually know the formula. I actually know the recipe. So what does this have to do with this episode? When you get challenged in your own arena, are you shelling up constantly and staying small? Or are you just saying, honestly, I know I'm afraid to be judged right now, even right now, having said all the things I just said about myself. And I've earned that through thousands of coaching calls, hundreds of speeches, dozens of training, people all over the world, you know, thousands of podcast episodes, interviews, hundreds of them with people. I've earned what I just said every single day. And yet, even when I'm saying it, in the back of my mind, it's like, oh, is that going to come off as arrogant? What if, what if, seriously, what if I just believe in my own abilities and what if I've actually earned it? What if I actually do know how to build a multi-million dollar business? Because the truth is, the truth is, I actually do. I genuinely, wholeheartedly know how to do that. I actually know exactly how to do it. And here's the interesting thing. When you get challenged by someone with low awareness, what did we used to do? We used to just run out of the room. Okay, fair enough. Full circle here, Kevin sends me this client. This dude literally came to me, okay? I didn't reach out to him. Hey, can I coach you? I'm not looking for clients, right? Comes to me, calls me. On the phone with this dude, I've never seen a bigger ego in my life than this guy. You know who I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah, of course you do. I called Kevin after. I was like, don't ever send me anyone like that again. Anyways, uh, this dude's ego, and and here's what I'm going to define as ego. What someone thinks of themselves versus the reality. If it's way too far off, okay, someone who talks way more than they walk. Okay, that's a huge ego. So I, this person said, why should I coach with you? Like the same idea, right? Same exact thing. And I'm like, I had a moment during the conversation where I'm like, wait a minute, you like called me. Mm. Like, I don't, you shouldn't. You shouldn't coach with me. I'm not going to spend the next six months trying to break down your ego. Here's why I should coach. you should coach with me. If you want results that are far beyond what you currently have, then you need to understand that I'm far ahead of you in everything that has to do with that. And I'm not ahead of you in everything. I'm ahead of you in the things we're talking about right now. And it's not even close. And I'm not going to spend the next six months trying to convince you of that so that I can pour into your consciousness. And so, again, this episode is fear of judgment. Sometimes you're afraid to sound arrogant. Sometimes you're afraid uh, of other people's judgment when when you post on social media of what you're doing and what you're not doing. Judgment keeps us so stuck and so small And if you have humility, true humility, meaning an accurate understanding of your own importance and an accurate understanding of your own capabilities, you need to realize that sometimes people don't. Sometimes people are going to challenge you and they're testing you in a way. They're almost testing you to see if you've got what it takes. And if you fail that test, you're not going to get that client or you're not going to, you know, X, Y, Z. In this case, I didn't even want the client, but... Mm. Yep. He called me, not right after that, but shortly thereafter, <laughs> and I never even answered it. It's just like, yeah, you can leave me all the voicemails you want, I'm not interested. It's, I think what it is, is it's a measure of how well are you the guide. The guide just understands that not everybody's going to understand what they're doing. And I think that's really, I think that's kind of the measure, is I don't, you don't have to understand what I'm doing. It's, I'm doing it. I'm confident enough in it. I'm capable enough to do what I'm doing, but I think it takes time. So I was talking to Taryn last night before we went to bed, and I said I had an interview today or the day before, and at the end of the interview, the person said, hey, what's your mailing address? We have a t-shirt and we have some stuff we want to send you. And I said, I don't don't give out my mailing address. I'm not, I appreciate it very much, but I'm good. And they said, well, it's just, we already have it. It's just a shirt, like, Let's just let let us send it to you. And I said, no, I, I really do not give out my mailing address. I'm good. I would be very happy if you would donate that to someone in need. Like give it to somebody who needs it more than I do. I don't I have plenty of t-shirts. I'm good. I appreciate it very much, but I, I'm not I'm not interested in that. At one point, I would not have had the courage to do that because I think I would have been more afraid of the judgment that they would have thrown back at me rather than me standing up for myself. So I do believe a lot of it has to do with your level of confidence. But make sure you're, 
make sure you're testing the ice. When you're walking out on ice that you haven't tested yet, you you smack it with a stick, even though that doesn't do anything. But you just, you're, you're hitting in front of you. You're saying, ah, that seems pretty good. All right, I'll take another step. Okay, that seems pretty good. I'll take another step. Ideally, you take an auger and you cut a hole and you'd see how much ice was there, but not everybody <laughs> has an auger. So I think it's a good way to, to experience it is, okay, what's, how am I feeling in this moment when I'm getting judgment? Am I feeling like I'm triggered and I'm going to snap back? Am I feeling like I'm, I'm turtling up? Is it different than it used to be? Is it the same than it used to be? That's really what I've started to understand is as I've believed more in what we're doing, I, I told this story, I think. I was at a wedding recently. I don't think I did tell the story. I think I told you. I was at a wedding recently and there was somebody there who just, I don't get, I'm, I don't mesh with that kind of person. It's just very entitled, not my type of person. And we were talking about- Arrogant? What, yeah, 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 definitely. We were talking about what we do, and this person was like kind of making fun of it. Like, oh, you're, you're a podcast? Like, that must be weird. Like, you can't make a living off of that. And I just tried to stay as centered as I could, and I said, well, no, we do just fine. Like, we're, we're going to be fine. And they, they just kept poking and poking and poking. <laughs> and this, I, it literally got to Back the point. Back in the day, this would have been harder. <laughs> yeah, this would have, yeah, 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 this would have been very hard. Back but, when you actually were afraid of that. You I know, know, I know. Well, now yeah. it's, it's like, I understand. Yeah. I mean, how could you possibly know? How could, yeah. you couldn't, unless you're a podcaster, and even then you probably wouldn't. But it, right. it got to the point where I, we were definitely jabbing back and forth, but it was from a place of, it wasn't ego. It was more, when you're a comedian and you get heckled, you use the heckling to make your set better. That's what happens when you're a comedian. You're going to get heckled. Somebody drunk is going to try to make fun of you, but you're better at making fun of them because you're a comedian. And that's what comedians do. So we were jabbing back and forth. And this person said, what's your podcast about? And I said, and this person had already alluded to the fact that they're not into self-improvement. I said, well, it's how to get a little bit better every single day. It's not for you. And this person jabbed back at me in a funny way. And they were like, do you it's do it by you. yourself? Strong work. The, the old reverse negative self. The old self. reverse negative <laughs> self. Do you do it by yourself? And I said, no, I have a business partner. And honestly, he is a genius and he is more improvement oriented than I am. You definitely wouldn't like him. And it was just this interesting, like, this is just who I am. This is who we are. It's honestly probably not for you. I don't care. I, I'm not trying Send to get you. Send her on over for coaching. <laughs> I'm not trying to get you to like it. I don't, this is what I'm doing regardless of, of what you think. I, this is what, I'm doing it for me. I'm not doing it for you. It's not so I can come to a wedding and have a cool party trick. That's not why I'm doing it, right? So it was interesting. But to Alan's point, in the beginning, that would have been, there's no way. I would have folded. I would have folded and said, yeah, it is, it is whatever. It is this. You must, if you don't believe in something, your positive judgment of what you're doing must be greater than somebody else's negative judgment of what you're doing. Well and said. That, that's the belief. Well you got to believe in what you're doing because if you believe in what you're doing, you're the guide. And when you're the guide, things start to bounce off more. It takes time, but it can happen. You told me, I know we got to jump. Yeah, we four minutes. Oh, dollar in the jar. Hold do on. we do the thing? Yeah, yeah, hold on. Keep, keep, keep talking. Let me find it. Okay. Ooh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Kev, early on you said that if you had gone to someone else about your podcast, the Hyperconscious Podcast, before we teamed up, mm. who didn't believe that it could work, mm. that you might have stopped. Yeah. Which I think takes a lot of humility to admit I that. I wouldn't be here if you and I hadn't partnered up. I know that. I'm certain of that. I don't understand. I don't know if I ever fully will. We've talked about it. I know you that's will. Not I'll get you to understand about. eventually. Okay. Well, the point is, I appreciate it. Thank you for the, the kind words. And thank you for defending me to that random human in the wedding. Um, you definitely wouldn't like him. You should send her over for coaching. It's funny. <laughs> you might as well have done that because it'll be another one of those same experiences. And then I'd call you triggered. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But anyways, so you said if you had gotten advice that was like someone who didn't believe. Because when, when Kevin said, I want to start a podcast, I want to be like Joe Rogan. I was like, you can absolutely do that. 100%. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I really meant you could have a successful podcast. I'm certain of it. There's no question. That's That was never a question for me. No. It's obvious. Like, well, if X, Y, Z, you know, a thousand times for the next decade or two, I, I failed to mention that, right? Yeah, yeah. He left that but, part uh, off. <laughs> but that's the interesting thing here is you, the quote you just said, let's not forget that for the rest of your life. We also should bring that to that speech at Wisconsin. Because I think that's one of the big problems in high school. Mm. Fear of judgment. One of the biggest. Your belief in what you're doing has to be greater than the judgment of others. Yeah. 
And if if it's not, you will stop. And honestly, that, I'm telling you, that right there is why most people don't achieve their dreams. That is why. Every time you post on social media, you and I know, there's that little moment of how's this going to come off? Is this going to land? Is this going to make me seem blah, 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 blah? It's no one on earth doesn't have that issue. Even the most confident people you think that are so confident, trust me, they're editing and making sure it's perfect, perfect. Like even people who try to post things that are unflattering are posting about something unflattering on purpose so that you can resonate with it. You know what I mean? The people who do the no makeup posts or the stretch mark posts or whatever. So just understand there's no one who's not afraid of judgment. Some people just overcome it and some people's belief in themselves are greater than the fear of judgment. And if your belief in yourself is greater than your fear of judgment, if your belief in what you're doing is greater than your fear of judgment, then you are in a really good spot and you and that's a game that is infinite and you have to keep you have to make sure that the Libra scale is tipped in the right direction on that one. We got to go because we have a call. Next Level Nation, tomorrow for episode number 1,155, Can You Have Balance as a Dream Chaser? Alan's favorite word. As always, we love you, appreciate you, grateful for each and every one of you. And at NLU, we do not have fans, we have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Please reach out.